by what they say via that saying. As a Confucius say, man with hand in pocket feeling cocky. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's just start this shit. Let's do it. G'day. This is the Two Beards Wrexham podcast. Your go-to for all things Wrexham AFC. Join us as we chat about the highs and lows of our favourite footy club. She'll be right now. G'day, beard brethren, sheilers, fuckheads. And just all around legends, welcome to Two Beards Rex and Podcast, brought to you by the Sports Social Network. Uh, that's right, we are on the Sports Social Network, Europe's biggest podcast network. Um, I'm your host, Rousey. That over there is Adrian, mate. What a week it has been, hey? We have got a lot to talk about today. Bit of, bit of, uh, bit of fun, joyous occasion, to be honest. I'm looking forward to it. We've got... So much to talk about, but the best part about it is there's no miserable shit, there's no down shit, there's no there's no negativity that we can bring into this because we're coming off of two wins and we are almost there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to have to touch on that later on in the program, I think. So stay tuned. Touch it all over. Because we got an absolute banger of a program today. Um, but before we get into that program, we've got to do our shout outs for the week. We've got to do our housekeeping. So guys, twobeardsmedia.com. Um, if you want to join our Patreon program, because now we're on Patreon, we've moved over. We scrapped out our last program because it just sucked. And now we're on a better program. So we're on Patreon, <laughs> multiple tiers. We're fucking killing it. We're loving our fuckheads. They're just a great bunch of people. And if you want to join that community and it is a community of people that we got there, really great um links will be in the description down below so but for the base tier membership for five dollars a month gets you access to our fans only discord gets you shout outs every week on the podcast gets you discount off our merch store and also gets give we do giveaways occasionally in in the discord so uh links will be in the description in the link tree down below if you want to sign up to that adrian yes well, the 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 on top of that, um, you know, he's he's shouted it out the five dollar tier, which is amazing. He's nailed that on the head. We've also got the ten dollar tier and the twenty dollar tier. The ten dollar tier getting that executive producer qu- credit, um, and as at the end at the credits, so you'll be able to see your name at the end there as um your and as well as getting the rest of the five dollar tier as well. Um, you'll also be getting um. Oh, and the $20 tier, you know, you've got things such as um, you'll get a, um, I think we get, we're going to do, I think we'll do a watch through really, but 30 minute FaceTime call to an hour, you know, that way, you know, if we want to watch a game instead, we can do that with the, with the $20 tier. Cause you've, you've paid your good money. You'll get that executive producer credit. You'll also get the rest of that stuff, but also you get a free piece of merch every six months. And that's for every rolling six months. So once you sign up to it, six months from that date, you'll really get to pick anything from our merch store, which is pending. We are swapping a um, bit of shocking news that is coming through uh, hopefully in the next couple of days, maybe even before this is released, um, but we'll go from that once it rolls around. But that is also part of that $20 tier. So there are some people on it that I want to thank because we have got some really cool people. So uh, in no particular order, I've got Aaron, Andy, Will, Chris, John, Dan, Anthony, Jake, Sarah, and I cannot say it enough. We also have Ryan as our honorary fuckhead and we've got Chris here and we've got me. So we have got a very good group of people. We're very lucky and um, honestly cannot thank them enough for being a part of the program. Yep. And a new announcement with regards to our Patreon. If you don't want to um, have ads on our podcast and you want to listen to the audio version of a podcast, podcast ad free, then head over to Patreon because every single episode will be posted up from here on forward, um, completely ad free. So more incentive to sign up links in the description down below, you know, the deal guys get on it. We've got to get to our next segment. Um, Adrian, we have a visitor coming. Yes. On. So, um, for those of you that don't know, we, we're Aussies and we've got a fellow West Aussie coming on who is a, a Wrexham expat. 
and he's going to come and tell us about his time in Wrexham. So we're looking forward to that. And then we'll get on to the games. Yes. And we'll discuss, obviously, what is going to happen moving forward or what has Quick to happen. So, uh, yeah, let's get on to it. So much to pack in. Guys, we'll see you guys after this break. Well, as you just heard, we've got a Wrexham expat on board. He actually is from my fellow state of Western Australia, the mighty West Aussies. Mark, mate, how are you doing, mate? You've been around for a while now. I've seen you on, on X. I've seen you pop up on a few of the other other platforms. Mate, how, how are you? Let's start with that first, right? <laughs> how are you feeling? Because I'm, I'm fucking tired. <laughs> I think I'm just as tired as you, but yeah, I'm doing really good. Um, I'm feeling a lot better after this, this morning's victory, obviously. Um, it was a great performance. Um, honestly, it was the best performance I've seen. Um, I uh, like 2.45 this morning and I'm still buzzing from it. You know, it was great. Um, <laughs> Did you sleep afterwards? No, I went straight to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I couldn't sleep after that. I was so um so energized. I just couldn't go back to sleep. So um, I'm right. paying for it now, but we'll get through this. We'll get through it together. <laughs> what time did it finish for you guys? Because for me, it was okay. Like it was a 4.15 start, but then it went led into when I would get into my routine to get to work. So like land into 6.30 and I could just kind of chuff on. What about you guys? Like what time did it finish for you? It was 4.45 for me and then I just went straight in the shower and drove to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay rough 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 <laughs> so you've you've um you've been to Wrexham just recently you've only just come back i understand yeah so i went to Wrexham um for a couple of weeks um basically it was to see all my friends that i haven't seen for three three or four years and we we're all celebrating a special birthday i won't tell you how much but it's quite large um and we went to spain and we did a lot of stuff like that but while i was there i went back home to Wrexham itself and um, the city is changing. Well, actually, it's city now, not town. It's yeah. changing a little bit. Um, the buzz around the town is all about the football team. Um, it's amazing to see. Everybody's talking about the football team. You're seeing kids walking around with shirts on. They're saying, Mullen, I'm Mullen, and they're playing football in the corner of the street. And it's, it's really nice to see. Because originally I'm, I used to live opposite the football ground when I grew up. So right opposite the football ground, right opposite the turf, I grew up. So oh, I was wow. living. I I know the areas. I went around the. I went to see the um, the ground, and it looks so nice. The ground now than how it used to be. The turf's looking amazing inside. Um, I used to go to the turf when I was younger, and I used to sit in the balcony and watch the matches from there. That's how old I am. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, it's it's looking very very special, eh? and everybody's got the buzz. Everybody wants them to succeed because it's the heartbeat of the town, and you know that from the series you've been watching them and such like. Um, my mates are all buzzing; they've all got season tickets. They're all into it. Everybody's like phoning everybody. Are you going to this game? Are you going to this game? Can you saw me a taxi out? Can you saw me a bus out? Can you saw me a car out? Everybody wants to go to the games, and it's very very hard to get a ticket. I was only able to get the ticket for the Doncaster game, which was great. Um, <laughs> less than less <laughs> um, So, yeah, I, I got on. It was a two-hour journey, two-and-a-half-hour journey to Doncaster with a bus of eight of us, really season ticket holders. We had the drummer boy on the, t uh, the thing as well on the bus, so he was drumming hey. away. Um, so, yeah, everybody's just loving it. Everybody's loving it. We got to the map. Um, the amount of coaches I've never seen it before, only when it was the big games, you know, the huge games when we were going away in the FA Cups and such like. But the amount of coaches that they're booking now to go to the match, they're, they're, they're strung all the way down the old road, you know, around around the turf. And it's it's amazing to see. Yeah, and the, the Doncaster game. I'm going to lay into a little secret, yeah? yeah, I, yeah. Went back, I went back to watch the Grimsby match and they lost. Then I went to went went to see the Wembley game, and we lost. <laughs> then I went back home. And I've gone to see the Doncaster game, and they've lost. 
I haven't seen him win since 2012 live. Right. No. So, so going off that, you ain't going back. I'm no. Uh, at least you not to a promote. Decide, yeah. If you do decide to go back, you give Rousey here your ticket because I'll go <laughs> in your place. All right. Because that's just. That that's no. just that's a crazy superstition right there. So, <laughs> well, that, I mean, you must have been you must have been feeling for Rob McElhenney when you know watching back the, you know, right. for the Docker, he was complaining after missing two games and like oh two games he saw or whatever three games, you know, they've lost. You're like oh, since 2012, I haven't seen him win, man. So shut up, like. <laughs> Meeting with him, I was thinking, oh my god, I've got the same feelings, you know, but. Yeah, no, it's it's been good. I've been back like twice now since I left, and both times the city is changing. You can see it's changing. It's like three years ago since I last went back, and then this time I go back, and you can see the change in the city. It's yeah, I said like I say, they're going places. I don't know how long that stand will hold up. You know the capacity of it. I mean, the four wall stand, the new stand there is going to be amazing. But they're going to have to build a new stand. It's going to have to be a new stadium. I mm. hope same spot. You know what I mean? But a big. Were you angry? Um, were you tempted not to come back? <laughs> <laughs> You're always tempted. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't act on it like you, Rousey. We don't act on the evil, evil thoughts in your head saying, "Just do it. Just tear up your ticket. Don't worry about it. Like, just tear up your passport." <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I've lived there for 38 years. I was living there. And um, to see all my mates again, it was great. To go into, back into the same lifestyle, going to the pubs with them and doing all sorts of stuff on the weekend. Um, it's great to see. But the lifestyle over here, the warm weather, is a little bit different. Um, and it's better for me, the lifestyle over here, even, even though I'd like to go back at some spot. You know? mm. But, uh, yeah, it rained every day. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> it's a good advertisement oh. for, for Wales. <laughs> it was a beautiful place. It's a beautiful country. Go to Wales. It's a shit weather, but a fucking fantastic football club. <laughs> yeah. That's there you go. Good. Uh, That's on a bumper sticker, mate. But actually, yeah. I did have a question about, like, you know, you mentioned you came over to to Australia. What what made you? Was it for work? Was it for just a change of scenery? And when, when did that happen? Well, I originally moved... Um, 13 12 years ago i moved to new zealand uh and i lived in new zealand for like 10 years and it's only about the last 18 months i moved over to western australia um because new zealand's very much like wales it rain it rains a lot it's not so hot you know what i mean so because i'm getting older and my bones are starting to creak i decided to move somewhere a little bit warmer um <laughs> Never been to New Zealand before when I moved there. I turned up with two suitcases and then I'd never been to Western Australia before and I turned up with two suitcases and it just seemed to work out. So, yeah, my bones ain't creaking so much here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's better uh, job prospects over there. They earn more money over here compared to the UK. Um, mm. It's a lifestyle, I think. Until um, you factor in the um, exchange rate. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's going back bit. must be hard, mate. That that's got to be hard. It was. <laughs> I didn't take enough money. Early. No, no, it was. Honestly, uh, yeah. If you got any supporters of Wrexham or just want to go and see Wales, Wrexham is the place to go at the moment. The mm. tourist is going crazy there. They can't get enough people in there. I I went yeah. past the turf. There was a coach packed outside the turf. It must was, be so crazy to see, like, one when from when you left there from to yeah. going back to seeing what it is now. It must just be absolutely blows my mind. bonkers. Uh, that's <laughs> blows my mind. You, I, I, I sent you a few pictures when I went to the ground, and um, like I said, there was a coach outside the turf. I went in the turf, and there's American tourists sit, sitting in there having drinks and taking photographs, and Wayne was in there, the landlord, and I was speaking to him, you know, and it was just like, it's crazy because everybody's famous now because of the Rex and Rex <laughs> and um, murals and stuff around the town and everybody's taking photographs and it's, yeah, the tourists are going crazy for it. Damn. And it's hard to remember. It's hard to get a ticket. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We see that all online all the time. How, <laughs> how hard it is to get a ticket to those games. It's insane. But uh, so you moved over to Western Australia. 
the hottest state in Australia. The sun. Yes. Basically the sun. Yeah, you move to the surface of the sun. <laughs> the sun. Surface and of the sun. I know oh, I know a lot of um a lot of people from the UK <laughs> or from Wales, they they tend to be a bit shocked when they come here and, and experience how how hot it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, uh, then you, you went and moved to the area where all of the palms and that they all they all gather. They're all up there that, that area where you are. <laughs> north of the, so um yeah I moved into my house where I am now and my next door neighbor is British one side I talk to the other next door neighbor they're British yeah. so I'm, <laughs> they're all I mean, in that area they are all in that area it's uh it's insane I don't know what it is with that area did you know it's... when you moved well, I had no idea I just <laughs> <laughs> it's a coincidence ah, that's so good. It just doesn't uh, make sense to me how that even happens. Like I actually, think about it a lot. There's like, a how really, does that all happen? There's a really good English pub there too. Um, is that? Yeah, um, oh, the name will come to me in a second. I went there. It is a top-notch English pub, oh, like right, straight okay. up. Like if you ever go there, I think it's. Um, hang on, I'm going to pull up the name for you while, while you Google it. While you Google yeah. it, I'll ask my next question, which was. So you've moved to the surface of the sun. You've gone. You've gone around the world. You've gone back and forth to obviously experience the different things. What was probably the biggest change for you moving? Maybe, maybe not to New Zealand, but maybe more for for Australia. What was the big difference from from here that you really weren't expecting? Um, probably, I didn't realize how big the AFL is. Yeah. I didn't realize. I I knew, you know, when I was in UK, I used to watch it now and again, but I didn't realize the support of when the, these games, the thousands go to watch these games. I didn't. When I went to New Zealand, I didn't realize that the rugby was so, you know, it was, you know, <laughs> they don't even <laughs> football, soccer, whatever you want to call it, don't it? And when I came here, it was all AFL. But I, I do feel that the soccer, or football, whatever you want to call it. In, um, Australia. We call it football. A good we call it football yeah. here, yeah. No. yeah we, I, I refuse. We don't, we don't I refuse to call it soccer. It's I'm, fucking football. Unless the soccer roos in that with your entrance. Feet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to. Slowly. <laughs> yeah. That that pub, by the way, it's called um, the Woodvale Tavern. The Wood, oh, yeah. It's just down the road from me, yeah. Yeah. I'll to go there. Just down oh. the road, and you've never been there. I've never been there. No, I'm, I, oh, I don't... dude, do it! It's amazing. You'll love it. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, mate, we'll go for a pint, yeah. Yeah, fucking a. Why not, dude? Like, like, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous right now. Like, I want. I'm really jealous. Like, I want to <laughs> hang out with you guys now. Go to the go to the cool <laughs> cool taverns. But you were saying, sorry, you were saying before um, about like, did you think that the football's, I guess, gaining a bit of momentum here now? Is that is that where you were I... going with that? I think it is because when I first, um, when you first looked at it from over in the UK, going back 12, 13 years ago, I didn't, they would say, oh, the football over there is not great. You know what I mean? Not great. And nobody used to watch it. Nobody used to be interested. And then you had a couple of players coming over and then you could see the Matildas taking off and you could see all the football going on. You could see them qualifying for stuff and you're thinking, oh, they're starting to get better and better and better. And since I've been over here, and you can see that, and people are supporting them. I went to you had the um, the World Cup and everything, and yeah, people are going mad for it. They're going mad. For it, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm quite impressed. I was quite surprised at that as well, how many people are into it. It is yeah. good. I hope it converts to club level here. But I mean, we've had discussions on this many a time. But the club level, it A League need the A League needs to dissolve and pick up all the old clubs from the NSL days and just bring back what made it good, which was, you know, expats who'd moved over. Like we had clubs from Greece, from Croatia, from Serbia, from England, from Scotland. That that's what made the foundation, and the A League said, "No, no, we don't want to do that because it's 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 it, you know we, it's all inclusive." But then they fabricated and made all invented these clubs, and we basically have a league of what twelve MK Dons. Basically, <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> no, no, not great. Um, but yeah, it can only get better, can't it? I mean, it's it's yeah. going going better and better, and it, I mean, good leagues aren't built in a short time; are they? they're built up over a long period of time. 
Actually, so, I've got to ask this question. I've got to ask yeah. this question. Being from, you know, experiencing English football or UK football and coming over to Australia and seeing the A-League, yeah. how do you think Wrexham would fare in the A-League? Dominate. I think they, I, <laughs> they would they would fucking smash it, wouldn't they? <laughs> yes, they would. They would you, in these teams that you've got over here, they've only got one or two, maybe three or four good players in that team. Wrexham would smash it. They've got some <laughs> played yeah. like this morning. They would smash it. Oh they, yeah. Top of the league by like literally five weeks in, like it, it'd be, and then you just sew it, sew it all up. But the reason the A League is entertaining is because it's the most unpredictable league in the world, purely for the fact that it is like no one knows who's good, who's not good. Um, yep. There's been a whole thing. I don't know if you've seen it, but there was a bit of articles around like in Saudi Arabia and and uh, the, the Arab nations. There's a bit of betting that happens, and they've been betting on the A League. And there's been like death threats going to like A-League players because it's the most unpredictable league. So they're putting big, large sums of money on the favorites and it never comes up because it's the most unpredictable league. So it's like, you know, I think I would akin it to League Two because of the way it's been going this year. Yeah, yeah it's like amateurs now and again, they're what they do. And you're like, what is going on? And they're, they're... actually... <laughs> <laughs> Do very well if they're in. Yeah. I mean, I would say it's probably maybe the equivalent to the National League, but um, I honestly think worse. I would love, I would absolutely love, and I would, I would give my left nut just to see Wrexham play Perth Glory here in WA, <laughs> and then just fucking stomp Perth Glory like thirty to nil. <laughs> that would be amazing. I would die a happy man. I would have seen everything then, and I would just be like, "Yep." See ya, I'm checking out. I think an email is Sam Kerr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So honestly, if you get on to Sam Kerr and just say, hey, look, pull some strings here, please. Uh, let's get this going. But I got so, um, we've talked about it like early days, um, but last year's April Fools was that uh Central Coast basically bastards. I hate them ever since. They said Wrexham's coming to town. They're going to play the friendlies on April 1st. And I didn't know what day it was. I'm like, oh my God. And you don't put it past it. These guys are the worldwide Reds. Come on. Like it makes sense. Um yeah. playing like, you know, Central Coast and Sydney and and it was like all these fixtures. It looks pretty legit. And yeah, we got done. So my point is go anywhere except for Central Coast. Perth, Melbourne, Adelaide, don't give a shit. Just don't go to Central Coast because those that that scorned me. <laughs> Will ever go down to Wrexham? Um, that's yeah, the we, aim. That's the aim. That's the aim. I think we'll get there. Um, I do want to go it. back home, and I want to, um, you know, see the places I was born. I, I think I last went out there when I was 13, 14 years old, so a long, long time ago. Um, I would really love to go back. and I mean, I, I don't think I would stay, to be fair, but I it would be hard because – that's home. <laughs> yeah, so. It's got to be the hardest thing, dude. Like, but both of you really, I mean, myself, like my mom's born in Scotland. I think the biggest thing for me is like, you know, go back to the homeland, you know, go back to like the highlands and like <laughs> go do that kind of jazz. But for me, it's like, well, I was born, born here. I was raised here. Like I've moved state, but I'm, I'm still in Australia. So I'm, I can, you know, travel with ease. Whereas for both of you guys, like, you know, COVID must've been a massive impact not just on football, but on family life in general. What like what was that like for you, Mark? Oh, it was um, pretty poor because we couldn't go anywhere. I, in New Zealand, it was. I was in New Zealand at the time, and they just shut off all the borders, and you couldn't go anywhere. You know, you were stuck in. I was stuck in the South Island. I couldn't even go to the North Island. I couldn't do anything. So we were stuck in limbo for so long. But I know in the UK, they were stuck in limbo for two or three years. And nobody could move around and nobody could work. My sister-in-law, she's a hairdresser. She couldn't work for two or three years because you have to, can't really work, work two meters away doing a hair, you know? So, uh, so yeah, the, it was, and that's what was the big downer, I think, on Wrexham. And that's why a lot of the shops closed and everything. They're building it back up slowly, but um, there used to be a really country town, if you see what I mean, um, a long time yeah. ago. Very vibrant. You used to go down the main street and, I used to say to people when I used to go, it'd take me an hour to get from the bottom of Wrexham to the top because I'd be talking to people on the way. And then when I went straight after COVID, 
there was nobody about. It was like a ghost town. And it was all shops closed and everything like that. And um, I think that was the most horrifying thing to me, how it changed. But now it's coming back. I've been back three year, two or three years later and I can see the shops starting to open. And I can see they're getting that vibrancy back and everybody's um, starting to come out of the shells. But it's still, it's still not like it used to be. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Went through a bad time of it. I'll, I'll just admit they did. Well, I mean, it's good that they've uh, they've had the uh, a bit of a touch from the angels, I reckon, from <laughs> <laughs> old Rob and Ryan. They've just completely reformed that place, and um, it's it, it, it touches me to see that you know an outside influence as as big as them would come in and completely just change the feel of the place. It's unlike anything in it's in football. It's probably the best story I've ever known. Yeah. to happen in in football and and a lot has happened in football so this is definitely something to take notice on yeah but, and um, it, it's similar to likes of teams like Newcastle and places the football team is the heartbeat of that town and they've said it yes but it always has been always has been if Rex were doing well in the FA Cup many years ago I, I was there to watch him play Arsenal. I was I was there to watch him play all these big games that you've heard about. I was I was there to watch them, and the the crowds that used to come, you wouldn't believe they come from everywhere. And it was that the town was bouncing, absolutely bouncing on these big games. You go away to these West Ham's, and you'd have coaches lined up everywhere. It was unbelievable. That's how it used to be. People don't realise that we had the support then. Mm. Uh, because it's the happy. So when the, the Wrexham team is playing well, they're doing having a good run in the FA Cup, the town like explodes. And that's why it's happening now. And that's why it's carrying on because the support is already there. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. where you come from. You come from America, you come from Norway, you come from anywhere in Europe, the world. The support is there anyway, and I don't think that's when you look at these other teams, the way they're jealous, and say, no, you, oh, you're getting all these supporters from all over the world. They don't realise that it, it was already there, and that's and that's the funny thing, because they don't know the history of it. Mm. So that's, that's the way I feel about it anyway, because it's always been there. Now, English football is massively popular all over the world, so... Mm-hmm. Um, and I, even with me being here, I'm still able to follow English football and I have done for quite some time. So um, it, it's the, the whole league system there is just unlike anything else. Um, but uh, I think, you know, definitely me and Adrian are going to get there. We just need more people to listen to us <laughs> and get more followers, get more fuckheads. I don't know. Well, the, next the time the you go over, grows, the, the more we all, uh, you know, the more chance yeah. we'll, we'll have to. <laughs> To do I'll something do you, with it. I'll do your deal. When you go over, I'll be your tour guide. Yes. Yay. Let's do that. Let's 100% do that. <laughs> go on a right session around Rex. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, let, you, we'll let you know when. when oh, I'm very you know. excited for that. <laughs> we also, can you also be like, so translate for us? Not because we can't understand Welsh accent. It's just no one's going to understand us. So you, you've you experienced it a bit more. So maybe that you could be like, yeah, look, Adrian's basically saying, can I get another point? That's what he's saying in a nutshell. Yeah. It took him 40 minutes, but he got there. It was like on Red Passion, someone was actually talking about us on Red Passion. They said, oh, um, you know, it's like they're speaking a foreign language, but they've grown on us. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, as long as you've grown on them, that's not too bad. I mean, tumors grow, right? Like, so it's like, you know, that's maybe that's not a so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So, how wrapping this up, how do you reckon this season's gone? Are you happy with how this season's gone? Have you ever been worried? Or have you just had complete faith the whole way through that we were always going up? Hey, um, I knew, well, when we went off last season, I was like, I'm buzzing like 15 years. It's a long time to be like that. And I still haven't, you know, I seen him in 2012 when I last seen him win. And (laughs) so (laughs) to see them go up as champions last season, get the record, do what they have to do and got up and then I was expecting this season, honestly, Mid table, mid table. That's what I was expecting. I know they had the players from League One and 
championship and stuff like that. I know that, but your expectations, you think it legal? It's, it'll be mid table, and then I was thinking, yeah, perhaps perhaps we could sneak the playoffs, and then for us to go on that little bit of a run and get into the top three and stick there, you're like, this is pretty special, and. Honestly, when we went to Doncaster, I thought they've wrecked some dinner up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did we, to be honest. We were quite morbid about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was painful. That was painful. Well, I think, um, you know, we've, we've got some games to now break down and we've Ooh. got to, uh, games to a game to preview and probably even just preview the rest of the season. So, um, Mark, I thank you for coming on our podcast and giving us your time sharing us his stories. I, I love it. And we're definitely going to catch up. We'll go to the Woodvale. We'll have a pint. FaceTime me when it happens. Have all a right? few Just something. <laughs> <laughs> well, David, why don't you come over? For this? I need to fly over. I, the thing is, my, I actually have relatives in Perth, so I have no excuse not to do it. So, like, it's just been – but my parents and my, like, immediate family are in Melbourne, so my next trip's to Melbourne. So, all right, screw it. What I'll do is Melbourne and then I'll do – and then I'm doing Perth the next one. That's just done. Done deal, all right? We've just sealed it. I've made a seal of approval here. <laughs> all right. We'll hold you to it, Adrian. <laughs> all right, guys. Well – after this, we are going to review the game last night against. Oh, geez. I tell you what. Crawley. <laughs> I was getting there. I was getting there. I'm just thinking about how tired I am. I'm so fucked right now. But yeah. <laughs> he's crawling. He's crawling there. He's crawling to the end of this. So. Crawley and Doncaster, we're going to review and um, and preview. Uh, Forest Green as well, and have a chat about what we got to do to go up. Let's go. See you guys after the break. Ooh. Well, that was that was Mark from WA, my hometown. Right now, it's so good to have him on. But right now, we have to talk about Colchester. That was on the weekend and also Crawley. I think I made a bit of a gaffe before and mentioned that it was Doncaster, but fuck me. It was, it's all the asters. Um, <laughs> we'll just go in with, we'll go with Colchester. Um, that was a very interesting game. A very, it was, man. Very interesting game. And I was worried. You and I were both worried about Colchester. Mm -hmm. Um, they obviously scored <laughs> and <laughs> I remember when they scored, I thought, fuck, here we go. They're going to park the bus. It's the every thing, time. The worst thing that could have happened was them parking the bus, but lo and behold, they did not have the fucking legs to last the 90 minutes. No, <laughs> they so, didn't. The, oh, they to, to run you through, to run you through those set. legs, mate, the run you through those legs. That is that is exactly what happened. <laughs> like if you look at these stats, so it, if you go by the, we have like the little worm that we talk about where it's got the momentum basically, uh, and that momentum kind of was completely in Colchester's way um, until about the last twenty minutes. Um, yes, we had openings. Yes, we had little spikes, but predominantly, if you look at the worm, that's what it's looking like. But my biggest thing from this mate is what you just said. What happens when we go down? When another what what usually happens? What did you say before? They park in their bus. Le park le bus. <laughs> that is kind of what they did. <laughs> because That's exactly what happened what they fucking did. It's exactly what they did. <laughs> the only difference is they they mugged it off to look like they were they were still making for for attacks. But point is ball possession was actually in favor of Colchester, we would make, mm. that makes sense, 56 to 44%. That only evened up again at around the 70th minute mark with 20 minutes to go. So that'll be making sense when, when we go into the goals. Mm. Well, goals I was mean, expected. They had a really, I mean, that strike was Adelanke or however, however you hear it, say his name. He was a brick shit house. He was built like a fucking cat. He a kinda, yeah. Yeah. Built like an absolute brick shit house he was. And I'm um, I was sitting there looking at him thinking, fuck, this guy's just like he's towering over our players. He's 
built. He looks like he's got muscles for days, you know, muscles upon muscles upon muscles. And he was running our defense ragged. And he looked, yeah. he looked dangerous. But he got 100%. taken, but he's 35 years old and he got taken off to obviously because they've got to manage his minutes every single game because of his age. So they pulled him off, but he was their most threatening player and they pulled him off, pulled him out of the game. It didn't make much sense to me that because uh, that at that stage of the game, they were starting to run out of the legs and you could clearly see that. Um, I think the management for a team that is going for promotion versus someone fighting relegation is very different. It's almost mm. the opposite. You go, right, play him until we can get no more out of him, rest him so that we can go again next week. Because there's no point in beating Wrexham, right? Because it's it's not a special three points beating Wrexham. It's not a, you don't get mm. bonus points for beating us. It's the same as if they beat Forest Green, as if they beat Accrington, doesn't matter. So for them, they're like, we'll fuck it. We're one all, we'll take a point here and let's go from there. And that's exactly what happened but if you go by their total shots the the total shots to colchester was 14 to to wrexham's 12 if we go by shots on target though two to both teams <laughs> so this is one thing that pissed us off and uh, there was a like in the um in the uh, fuckheads discord we had there was a bit of a dis creative discussion around you know teams who are fighting relegation and how they play coming up against teams who are fighting for promotion and also our away form versus not you know our home form look the way i look at it is we won we won the game that's that's the that's mm -hmm. the biggest takeaway from this there was a different shift towards the end and maybe it was because it was Colchester maybe it's because we actually turned a corner I'd like to believe it's because we turned a corner and because you said exactly it Akinde came, got taken off which doesn't make sense <laughs> but you know Akinde scores in the 54th minute Mullen scores at the 62nd and then we make a change for Fletcher to come off so Fletcher had started Ollie Palmer comes on now we always talk about Palmer drawing at defenders have we ever seen someone draw a defender to allow another defender to move forward and score? Because that's what we saw on the weekend with he Max drew three. fucking He drew Clareworth. three defenders. He drew them all off. <laughs> he drew three defenders. I watched the, watch it back. He's had, got three on him. Um, and obviously it was oh, that Max Cleworth to see his first league goal. It was, that was something special. It's like he turned around and he, he had no idea like what to do. He's just like had this big cheesy grin on his face. He's like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> he but, was I mean, an that absolute header ball was of like, energy afterwards. That, you could have, you could have put a deck chair down, rubbed one out, you know, had some candlelight, you know, by the time that left his head and went in the goal, you could have easily just blew your load and just been like, oh yeah, that was a slow fucking goal, but somehow it went past the goalkeeper and Max Cleworth, who is just simply dynamic. I'm really, I think, I don't think there is a single Wrexham fan out there at the moment that thinks Max Cleworth is average. <laughs> no, he, he's a starter now. He's a starter. He went from being shit, not, not shit. He went from being our reaction being, oh shit, someone's injured. Aaron Hayden's injured. Someone's out because of it. O'Connell's out, Boyle's out. Clareworth's in and we're like, ah, oh, you know, but he's a kid. He needed, he needed to get, he needed to grind it up. Well, now the kid's 21 and as Rob McElhenney says, he's old enough to go to Vegas now. So, <laughs> you know, but the biggest thing for me is that it, he's now just cemented himself in that starting line and we're starting to see, and it's so funny because it's the end of the season, but we're starting to see at this pointy end, a team be molded for league one. They're oh. just molding together for League One. And then whoever is the weak link, you know, I'm not trying to shit on anyone, but let's just say there was one player like a, I don't know, maybe Marriott. Let's just call him out. Not because he's been shit, but he just hasn't had the chance yet. That may be a position that gets changed up a bit during next year, but I don't see that back half changing now. That Boyle, uh, O'Connell, Clareworth kind of 
three uh, that sit sit between the two wingers. I don't see that changing. Sorry, Toza. Sorry, Tunnicliffe. You might get games during cup games. You might get rotation during injuries, but I don't see it happening um, next year. I think we're going to start to blood a lot more youth. And yeah, dude, we're going to get into the, at the end of the season about end of season awards, but he's got to be up there for, for the young player Ooh, of the season. He's, well, uh, the fact he's not, didn't get nominated as the EFL young player of the season, fucking that, that the people are not doing the nomination for that are fucking on drugs, but I digress. We backtrack. Mendy, he is out. Got mm. himself injured in that game. Lee was enjoying the rest. He was enjoying a bit of sunshine on his testicles. Um, you know, he he That's need- exactly what he was doing, by the way. Yeah, he was just he needed, flashing everyone. He needed to needed to give his Elliot Lee a bit of a rest. Um and he's just, you know, sitting back there, just chilling. And then old Mendy. Puts himself out for the rest of the season. We won't see him again for the rest of the season. So much for Elliot Lee's rest. Elliot Lee comes back on and Elliot Lee gets straight away into doing Elliot Lee things and making us all rock hard again. Um, I'm just thinking like he was, he was great. He was dynamic when he came on. Um, McLean obviously went into Mendy's role and um, Elliot Lee went shifted back into the midfield. Um, so um that was, but it worked. It, it worked. I mean, it it didn't look like it worked when they scored in like that fifty fourth minute because it just looked like oh shit, we've fucked with our lineup and we're 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 paying for it. But it was a bit of look again. We're pretty harsh on a conquer lately. Again, we're not saying he's a poor keeper. He just needs to get better at those fucking near post goals. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But like someone yeah. called me out in the fucking chat for that. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I know. Um, but but. Did you hear the coach after the game for Colchester? No. I just want to say he looked and sounded absolutely devastated. It's like he was almost going to cry in the interview. Well, I mean, his club's almost like, relegated. Like, he's almost confirmed relegation. Yeah, but he didn't do the same when they, they got the same damn scoreline against Stockport. He's like, I oh, think it's just my cl- team played pretty well. We gave close to the end of the year. Stuff. I'm like, it's hard. But he's almost crying over the fact that he lost to Rex. I mean, it was just... Oh, it's kind of heartbreaking to sit to hear, but hey, if you go down, you fucking deserve it. <laughs> but I actually Jesus. don't think I don't think Colchester will go down. No, I don't think we'll go into that at the survive, end segment but... when we talk about who's going to be yeah. where and whatnot. But but just to round off that this game for the last couple seconds for this is just my I'm going to go with my um, we've got two games to cover and I do want to cover them. Um, across both and this might give a good segue but this is just kind of my unsung hero now obviously Clareworth got a lot of attention during the Colchester game for his goal and you know fair dues he should have been Andy Cannon's been getting good raps from both games as well same with Mullen but I just want to talk about our mate who's just fucking McLean right let's just let's just talk about it McLean hasn't been the best player every week he hasn't. That's not okay. But he plays his fucking role and he can move in a heartbeat. Colchester is the example. He got moved because Mendy went down and Elliot Lee came on. They did a switcheroo and bang, he's back in his old position. And it was like nothing had happened. Now, I'm not saying he didn't, he was best on. I'm not saying he was. I'm just saying unsung hero for me has to go to McLean for both legs. We're not just talking about the Colchester game. We're going to cover it in the next one as well. But his statistics every fucking week are the most consistent out of every player. You have Elliot Lee who might be in the top, you know, at, let's say we're ranking out of 10, he's getting nines, you know, 8.9s, Mullen, same thing. But he'll have games where they're fives, you know. McLean is in the solid eights, seven to eights every week, which in FOTMOB standards, that is consistent. And we're talking about a Mr. Consistent. We're talking about a guy who technically was supposed to be finished. He was supposed to be a fill-in until we get to League One. I'm telling you right now, and I'm making this call right now, McLean steps into that lineup as nothing changes next year in League One. He will still be Mr. Consistent next year. I like that. I like that. He needs to be. I, I really, I love having McLean in the team. And um, I just hope, I hope it continues. I really, really do. So, um but then we come to this morning's game or last night's game, if you're in Wrexham uh, or wherever you are in the world. 
<laughs> wow. That Rouse is going to go to sleep at this point. Let's just do the Crawley, monologue here. <laughs> Crawley was just amazing. Okay. Yeah. So we obviously had. Not Crawley. That we were good against Crawley. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Crawley, Crawley was amazing. amazing. <laughs> we made him look. We made the scary team, the, the team that was apparently in form, look completely fucking bang average. We had their number. We had two goals, obviously from from Paul Mullen, who now steps up to third in the overall rankings with twenty one goals for the season. That is just bonkers. Um, we've got. We had goals. First goal from Barnett. And obviously, goal from the Lion King himself, <laughs> just absolutely amazing. Though day for it, uh, mate, absolute day for it. And do you know what we talk about unsung heroes, right? Elliot Lee. <laughs> How is right. he unsung? Because everyone gives him the credits. Well, the plaudits. I mean, That's not I'm unsung. A, I He's just a hero at this point. Him, I would almost be giving him man of the match. I know a lot of people gave it to Legend of the um, Week, mate. That's your Legend of the Week. That's legend what you're calling week. it. There wasn't a single score in that game that he wasn't involved in. Agreed. Agreed. Not a single one. The the goal, obviously, um, to to Barnett that started from Elliot Lee, um, managed to pass it, passing it off. Um, and getting it to Andy Cannon and Andy Cannon with a cross. That run started from Elliot Lee. Um, Mullins' amazing run where he just looked like a man fucking possessed running away from... Um, <laughs> he played angry, a, mate. He played angry oh, and it fucking paid. That speed, he chased that ball down. I was like, when when the, um, when the um, Crawley defender decided to kick it back to the goalkeeper. Yep. That speed that Mullen was just a man possessed, just running it down. And the second he got, like you could see as he got to it and I could, it was almost like I could see the moment the goalkeeper went, fuck. <laughs> this is. It's, it, it's literally <laughs> what went through his head, mate. He, he saw, you know, anyone seeing Paul Mullen going at like full pelt is, is, is hard, but I akin it to the game against Boreham Wood last year where, you know, again, Mullen was making runs with the ball at his feet. This was different. Obviously, he was running onto it. But when he was running onto it, you're right. It was a man mm. possessed is the only way to word it. A man fucking possessed. His eyes did not move from the ball. If I was a defender and I was to stand in front of him, I'd be dead because he's just he wasn't yeah. stopping. No, nah, he great. wasn't. He wasn't. And and you would think, oh, yeah, you know, they've kicked it back to the goalkeeper. But his instinct that to, to think, no, I'm going to catch that, I'm going to get to that ball first, was just, oh, just. Reflexes, mate. Just so good. It was so good. <laughs> so, so good. And to, and to see that happen, well, oh, I tell you what, that game against Crawley, I think is the first game I can honestly say where I had genuine tears in my eyes. From that, because I was just blown away. I I just couldn't mm. believe what I saw, and and for Mullen to do that, and then Barnett to get his first um, way to step up, way to step oh, up when it and, mattered. And Mullen, Mullen is he is fucking back, and I just feel like this team is starting to, or don't want to jinx it, touch wood, but it seems like they they're in for it, they're ready for it, they're gonna. Go. They're ready for League One, mate. They're they're ready for League One, and, and look, I'm going to go into the stats of this very briefly, only because it makes me fucking laugh. Because we always talk about stats don't mean nothing. Um, if you watch a game but you only watch the stats, doesn't mean shit. You could be like, oh, I'll, you know, whatever. We we dominated Crawley. Would you believe Crawley had 67 percent of the possession? We only had 33 percent possession. So you're telling me in the small 33 percent that when we had possession. We made a run for it every fucking time. Crawley, you could see it, the amount of times they passed backwards. And I want to tell you this stat because it's just so fucking funny. Okay. Accurate passes. Wrexham, 244. Now, you don't have to even know what amount is good in a match. Just Let's just go off of that. 244, Wrexham. We won 4-1, 244. How many do you think Crawley had? What, twice that? 
more than that. They had 595 accurate passes, 90% yeah, yeah. accurate possession of the ball. When they when they got it, 90% of the time, it went to its target. You're telling me that we dominated the best away form team in terms of uh, the best informed team, sorry, and we dominated them it, with 33% possession, with a third of what they dished out in terms of passes. That is when you know that Wrexham's here because we beat them at their own game. They tried to play their own game. They tried to do what they normally do, which is they take possession and they calculate until they can strike. We didn't let up. You know, we did at the end, but that was the 96th minute mark, I think, uh, or the 92nd minute mark. But dude, this is it. This is the Wrexham we've been waiting for. This is the team that's getting promoted. We, you know, touch wood, all the wood, touch my wood, touch your wood. Um, we are going up. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's 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 a given, and we're we're going to touch on on that in in the um after we've spoken about Forest Green, we'll touch on that. But um, yeah, just an amazing game all around, and Happy so day, great mate. to see it. And I, I'm I'm pumped for what is what is ahead. The boys are up for it. Two wins on the trot. We got Forest Green on the weekend. Now, Forest Green, they've got to come to the race course. The bloody vegans. <laughs> For the bloody vegans. Do you reckon we have would you reckon we actually have any vegan options at the like at the fucking what do you call it? Food stands? Yeah, like <laughs> don't give a shit. Um exactly, but so... like that's my point. Do you reckon they'll even show up? <laughs> they're like probably like, oh, do we do do we you guys have tofu? And we're like, no. And they're like, well, what's the point? What are they gonna do? Bring grass with them in a bag? I don't know. <laughs> and they wipe their ass with kale in their bathrooms or something. But um <laughs> probably it'll be the first time their butts have ever touched a three ply toilet paper. And that's wishful <laughs> thinking, assuming Wrexham's bathrooms has three ply, but it probably has more ply than whatever recycled shit fuckery that is at the <laughs> at the Forest Green. But that said, so Forest Green, they're coming to the race course. Um, their form of light has been light. Is probably the best way to best way to put it. Um, they've had a few losses and a few wins, and we obviously know how things went when we last went to their home ground. Um, but they're coming to the race course, and they're going to be facing a team that is doesn't just, want to slip up, doesn't want to slip, doesn't want to say no, he doesn't want to give up. Um, and we all know how hard things are can be, can be at the race course. So this will be very, very strange for um, for Forest Green. Jeez. Um, I don't reckon Parky changes that team. I reckon nah. that the same team will, will take to the field and it will just go nuts. Um, I would like to see, as my prediction, I would like to see another... Another probably four nil four nil win. Yeah, I mean you'd think that, but we are Wrexham, so we like to do it the hard way. I'm pretty certain that we have finally kind of broken the mold and we've gone right. This is it. We've got this. Now again, I'm not actually scared of Stockport at the end of the year. I genuinely don't give a fuck. I'm scared of the games like fucking Forest Green where we should be pumping them 6-0. We should be on paper destroying them. In saying that, I think we'll win 1-0. I'm not saying it's because they're going to play amazing. I just think we're going to be a little bit in our heads. It's going to be a bit of a fun one, but I still think we'll get over the line and win that one, one nil. Mm, okay. Well, we'll just have to wait and see what side shows up and what happens. Um, I'm predicting four nil. Um, I don't think. Yeah, I know you said it. Gonna, I don't think Forest Green are going to score. Um, I think. Oh, I agree. I, I, said we we're, I said they're not either. We are going. We will relegate them this weekend. We did it to Torquay, didn't we, last mm. year? So was it Torquay? We did it to last year. Yeah. Yeah, someone we will get, but I mean, I know there's a lot of there's a lot of talk around facing relegation teams, and in 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 all my years of watching football throughout the different leagues, with exception to the Premier League, but the Championship League, League One, League Two, when you face a relegation team or a team that's fighting for their life, 
it's always a banana skin. It's always going to yeah. be tough. Agreed. It's, it's, it's tougher than facing a team in the mid or towards Correct. the upper, end, Top. upper end because they are literally fighting for their lives. Literally. Um, Forest Green face relegation to the National League to conference football, to outside of the football league. And if they lose to us on the weekend, that's what is going to happen. That's now, why I don't think they'll let up a big score line. I think it it that's where my my only and this is being this is being very graceful towards fucking Forest because what they've dished out lately has been, you know, barely football. But I think if they've got any hope or any love for the badge that they play for, they don't get done. Do you know what I mean? Mm. They might, they will lose. I believe wholeheartedly they will lose. We'll win one nil. Uh, I don't think it'll be less than right. that. You know, it'll be plus that, but they can, we'll see. They can, they, we, we, we're going to relegate them and then they'll go to the national league and they'll get relegated again. And then they'll go to the national league North and they'll get relegated again. And they'll end up in the farmer's league where they belong with the other vegans. <laughs> it's hard because their club, their club, their club got taken over. Like they were, they were a club that was. I'm not saying the same exact story as us, but a very similar one in the sense they were an original team. They weren't MK Dons. They weren't forged into something. But of course, they added the greens part and and made it a little bit shitty. But <laughs> you know, there are some people who've been there since the beginning before they were green. You know, <laughs> like so to those fans who were there before they were green. And to the ones who are around and know their history of it, you know, I hope for well, if you do go down that you do well next year um, and you go up. For the people who are only going for them purely because they they, they go advertise themselves as vegan. Bro, how many clubs have vegan options? Literally, Premier League clubs all have it. So you can't be like, I picked this team because of that. Come on. Like, just come on. Be serious. <laughs> all right. So there's our predictions. Um, guys, after this, we are going to talk about some news, about what we need to do to go up. If we're going to go up, what is going up? My penis is going up. Um, we'll we're see. Gonna have to get, we're going to have to finish at some point because yeah. this guy's going to fall asleep. <laughs> so after this, after this ad break, let, let us talk news. Let's go. Woo! We are now sitting very pretty in second place on the ladder. Um, I tell you what, this weekend is going to be juicy, juicy. So do you know what has to happen now for us to secure promotion this weekend? And I've got to say, I hope it fucking happens this weekend. I hope because Rouse is away the following week, and if it happens while he's on a cruise with no fucking internet connection yeah. whatsoever, <laughs> he is going to be in tears. I will be, I'll be livid. But I booked this cruise over a year ago, and I'm looking forward to a bit of a holiday for myself. Um, um, you know, but I'll do what I can. If I even if I have to listen to the audio, I'll listen to the audio. But um, I think that. So basically this weekend, we're five points now ahead of MK Dons, right? Um, Mansfield obviously just won their game um, and they've jumped up above MK Dons now on the ladder, only just. We're, but, all, we're all Stags fans. Oh, yeah, yeah. So MK Dons has to, have to beat um, or have to lose to Mansfield this weekend, which is entirely possible. Um, yeah. there's a lot of talk around Barrow, but the thing is, is the goal difference. That's going to be a massive, massive thing. And there's no way in five games that Barrow has that they will be able to make up a almost 20 something goal difference between us and them. Um, so even if they, I do mean, if they're winning five nil a game, then oh, we've got a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I really, really doubt that's going to happen because they, they lost to Morecambe and they lost the last game as well. So, that mm, let me just know. say conspiracy theory here right this is a full-on conspiracy theory everyone fucking hates us like hates us now if you're let's say you're losing two nil to barrow right 
And at your middle table, nothing about this loss affects you at all. It doesn't matter. Wouldn't you, despite Wrexham, let him kick a couple more? Well, I think that's kind of what happened on last, last night against Crawley. That goal that they went in, that was the most nonchalant fucking... It was like that was like that was like giving your kids a participation trophy. Like yeah, here you go, buddy. <laughs> yeah, just here you go. Here's a goal. Have a goal. Just but honestly, like, but honestly, man, like if uh, let's just say <laughs> let's just say Barrow comes out of the woodwork and like they're beating teams three nil. These defenses fucking. Ha- I mean, these teams hate us. <laughs> so mm. my point is, if there's any chance of them putting us into a playoff position, wouldn't they fucking do it? Yeah, <laughs> I know that's that's literally <laughs> putting the game into disrepute. But yeah. um, but but I'm just saying conspiracy hat on, put on the tinfoil hat. Mm-hmm. That that's why I'm not saying it until Barrow drop a game. <laughs> yeah. Well, so we're four points behind Stockport. They keep on winning. Just um, now they got a game in hand as well. They've got a game in hand. Now it is entirely possible that we can. We can, if we win on the weekend, we go on an absolute tear and we completely destroy Forest Green. That to me is a statement to stop Port saying, you better not slip up because if you do, we're going to be right on your tail right until that very last game of the season to which it will possibly, and I, I still like this feeling that it will come down to stop Port versus Wrexham for the championship title. Now, <laughs> I, I've got some rebuttals big for ask. that, but you you finish your you'll finish your thing. Oh, okay, big ask. I get it, right? I get it because I've always said Wrexham will go back to back as champions. I've fully believed that. We're coming insanely close to it. If if Stockport do slip up a couple of games, then all of a sudden we're back in sight. If we win every single game, we're hunting. Assuming we win every game. Assuming, assuming we win, we got. Crew away. We got Forest Green at home on the weekend, um, and then crew's not a on. crew's not an easy match. If it, it's an away match, it's not an easy, not, match, not, no. not an easy but, one. But if the boys have really turned a corner, then there's no reason that we should lose any game for the rest of the season. The last three games, I I'm, I reckon we should win, right? If we if the boys really have turned the corner, they really are up for it. They want to push for that title. That's what they've got to do. They've got to win every single game and stop Port need to slip. We're not going to catch Stockport by winning those three games. Stockport need to slip. Four points, that's two losses or a loss and a draw. I think that's how it works. Anyway. Your maths are, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, the the biggest thing here, mate, is, is goal difference as well plays a massive part. Stockport are sitting pretty at plus 42. We're sitting at plus 27. Now, mm-hmm. of course, we talked about teams can have big wins. We talked about Barrow possibly closing a gap there. But that's the same equivalent gap that you're saying before that Barrow can't really do to us. So it's a very hard thing to do because you you would have to almost say that that goal difference plays as an extra win. So yeah. you'd have to you'd have to see the biggest capitulation of Stockport, no, like of any club, Re- Wrexham esque from a couple of years back when yeah, Stockport won losing, the title, losing two of their four games, right? Bef- yes, well, well, two of the games before they get to us. Okay, so okay. that's the thing. So they have to lose two of the games before they get to us. That way, three, if, we three. Get, if we win every single game from here to the end of the season, we will go into that last round tied on points. That's the only way it's going to be. Now, don't get me wrong. Absolute fucking miracle if that happens, right? But this is English football. This is football, and anything can happen. Mm-hmm. Now, Exactly, and that's why we possible. can't discount Barrow either. That's, that's why, why we, we can't, can't discount Barrow either. But that they've got a bigger task. <laughs> It's the same task. <laughs> it's no the way. exact same task. How is it? How is it that big of a task? Because they've got to, to hope what? Wrexham drop games. Possible. That's they've got to hope they win the next five. Doable. We've got to do the same thing, right? To beat get Stockport, right? I'm not talking about promotion now. I'm, I know we're going to get promotion. What I said, I still will ring true. I still I think, think we'll finish third. I think we will get promoted this weekend. 
This week, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. We can agree on that, hundred percent. And when next week rolls around and we've got crew, that's a big game. We'll see where Barrow's at. We'll see where Stockport's at. If Stockport's dropped their game or they've done what they did the last couple of games, where they just beat teams to death, then we need to kind of sit down and go right. Champions is over, but it's not about that. It's never been about that. And you watch the boys. They, as much as they'll play their hearts out for the rest of the game, the games of this year, unless Stockport do falter, they will be more than happy with promotion as we will be oh, as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. But a man can only dream. Right. And I, I am going to admit right now that I've pro- I was wrong to say that Wrexham will go back to back. I think it's a very, very big ask, but, it's still within sight because anything can happen. And if they do lose two of their games before they come to us, all of a sudden they're tied on points or lose one and draw one. And then all of a sudden they're, they're tied on points. So they've got, four, they've got an extra game than us. So does that factor into that as well? Yeah. Yeah. I'm factoring in yeah. that extra game. So cool. they would have to lose that extra game and then have a draw. And then all of a sudden, if we've won against forest green and then we win against crew, then all of a sudden we are tied to bang on points heading into the final game. Whoever wins that final game will get the championship title. It's possible. Mm. Unfortunately, right. unfortunately, Unlikely, we're going to see but possible. Yeah. And unfortunately what we are going to see is probably something we don't want to see, which is us doing a um, guard of honor for the champions. Cause that's how it's done. Possibly, you know, especially if we, if we drop any of the games coming up, then we've just guaranteed that that last game is going to be a dead no, rubber. If we if they guaranteed champions by that final game, we give them a guard of honor out, and then we go and fucking slaughter them. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. I, I wonder how the I wonder how the trophy goes because let's just say they it did come down to them winning on the last day, then they would be presented the trophy in our paddock if they won, right? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. That's why. That's what will happen. Which will, so, which like, will be, which which will be horseshit. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if both teams are celebrating promotion. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. <laughs> All these sock board people you, in the comments. Think, do you think there'll be a pitch invasion on on the weekend if it happens? Nope, nope. Because uh, Ryan from me, the wife from Wrexham said, very good point. He said, unfortunately, because it is still mathematically possible for Barrow. Let's just assume Barrow's wins on the weekend. Because it's, it's still mathematically possible for them, then it's. I think it's they can't do it because they'd look like absolute fucking idiots. And can you imagine every team that Barrow comes up against that don't need to win and don't need to lose? They have nothing to lose. And Barrow, they let Barrow kick a couple just to embarrass Wrexham. It mm. could happen, man. So I think the the biggest thing is I don't I think we will see a pitch invasion, but I think it'll come back to bite us. That's where I'll put it. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, don't like the idea of it until it's sold. If Barrow lose or draw and MK lose or draw, that's it. we and we win, that's it. We're done. We're we we've secured promotion. We cannot be kicked out of the top three. Exactly. Going up. And those games kick off at the same time, yeah? Yeah, they do. They do. So I know I'm going to be having my phone open looking at those scores. Me too. And just, oh, dude, I'm fucking pumped for it. And uh, it's I just think. pretty epic. I think it's going to be pretty epic. I really do. Mm. I really do. And it but really depends you... on Forest Green's mentality when they come to the race course as well. Are yeah, because they, they could be a banana skin for us. They've already given up. Mm. Who knows? Could be banana skin, mate. But look, to follow up on the last little bit, a foreskin. guys, if you are a, yeah, there it is. Um, this guy just loves dick on the brain when he's tired. Um, <laughs> so we have got, obviously, our fuckhead program, which has the Discord. It will be a little bit extra special if things go our way. Now, I'm not saying it's not, but there's three games to go. We continue this Patreon program throughout the off season as well. So um, this doesn't stop the giveaways won't stop. I actually have a bit of a surprise, but we'll leave it for, I want to leave it till the Stockport game, but, and I'll tell Rousey off air, but there will be a prize. I've obtained a pretty, what I think is a pretty cool bit of Rex memorabilia um, that'll be going out to one of our fuckheads who um, will guess the score line against Stockport. So another incentive maybe, but what I'm the reason I'm bringing it up is even if you don't want that, even if you just want to be a part of what could possibly be a promotion winning weekend, now's the time to sign up because if you get part of that Discord, it's going to be lit. He's going to be lit. Like he, and I mean, he will be off the 
gone. Puff the Magic Dragon, cooked. Me, I will be under the table drunk, and that can only create World War Three. but also will be a lot of fun. So yeah. if you want to join I'll us, be, be there. overdosing on my medication under that Stockport game, I bet you. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But anything is possible. And guys, hey, reach out to us in the comments. We didn't have any comments on the last video. What the hell are you playing at? Um, we want we like hearing give us your opinion. Let us know what you think. Tell us Rousey, talk more about dicks. Yeah, you know, if you want me to talk more about dicks, then I'll talk more about dicks. But reach out to us in the comment section, reach out to us on X. <laughs> Um, all the good places. Um, but hey, if you want to listen to a podcast without ads, then join the fuck ads. We got a the water's warm. We've only peed in it a few times. Um, well, actually, maybe a lot. But anyway, the water's warm. That's probably why. I'm not worried about warm. the pee that's in that water, mate. But let's I digress. <laughs> <laughs> but that's um yeah, let's just fucking have some fun and you know come and join up. Let us know. Down below, what you think? Do you think we're going to fit beat, beat uh, Stockport for champions? Do what did you think about the game? Just let us know. Reach out to us. Have a conversation with us. We love it. We love reaching out to people and and having and having chats and reading all the comments and stuff. So, and bum, and hit a like helps us with the algorithm. The more people that fucking do that, and the more this show gets watched, the more chance we got of going to Wrexham. So, guys, beer brethren, cheers, fuckheads. All Around Legends, this is Two Beards, a po Wrexham podcast. I almost went with a lot old name then. Holy shit. Oh, this guy's cooked. Anyways, guys, it's been a great one. <laughs> Beard Brethren, Shieldheads, Fuckheads, and All Around Legends. Yes. I've been Adrian. That over there is Rousey. Let's go. Woo! Woo! <laughs>